Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And so, to give you a little bit of background, I conducted a retrospective audit of some 300 samples of nursing notes for adults in the ED UHL in November of 2014. At the time, I'd been asked to get involved in a research project that was looking at the older person journey in the ED. So my motive for conducting the audit really was to get a sense of the patient journey in the ED, but also to get a sense of how ED nurses were contributing to that journey. Just to give you a little bit of insight, I'm holding before you four staple sheets of paper, which consist of two progress sheets, an observation chart, and a fluid balance chart. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the nursing documentation that we were using in the ED UHL at the time. Now, it becomes clear pretty quickly that this type of nursing documentation has many deficits, not least the fact that it fails to offer a comprehensive assessment. It doesn't give a coherent account of the patient's journey. It doesn't integrate the latest evidence base, and crucially, it doesn't articulate the contribution of ED nurses. So this got me to thinking about what was the contribution of ED nurses to the acute and emergency service. I knew anecdotally what ED nurses were doing, but from a medical legal perspective and formally, I had absolutely no idea, looking at this nursing documentation, what nurses were doing on a daily basis. Now, we've heard Savita Halapanava mentioned several times today, and I suppose on the Western seaboard particularly, we were reading in the aftermath of her death. And I suppose if I'm being absolutely honest, there were many of us in the ED at UHL who thought, thank God, something like this didn't happen in our department. Because it could have done at any hour of the day, any day of the week, and particularly when we were using nursing documentation like this. So the two things that came out of the reports into Savita Halepanavar's death were number one, that she had died from undetected sepsis, and number two, that nurses had a critical part to play in the detection of sepsis. And this goes for ED nurses as it does for nurses in any other clinical domain. Now the research suggests that ED nurses are critical to screening to identify patients who have sepsis. And of course this is absolutely logical. Because we can have all the pathways and protocols that we want, but unless you have ED nurses who are knowledgeable and actively hunting for sepsis, then that protocol ceases to become effective. ED nurses are critical to initiating the diagnostic workup, and of course, again, this is logical, because oftentimes it is the ED nurse who is the first person to come into contact with the patient upon presentation to the ED, so arguably they are best placed to initiate the protocol. The research would also suggest that ED nurses are critical to reducing door-to-needle time for administration of intravenous antibiotics. So what was I going to do about the four staple sheets of paper? I decided that the only thing for it was the development of a nursing pro forma. So I wanted to develop a nursing pro forma that would offer a comprehensive assessment, that would offer a coherent account of the patient journey, that would integrate the best evidence and crucially would articulate the contribution of the ED nurse. And oftentimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's this articulation of the contribution of the ED nurse that is sometimes overlooked. But if I'm a CNM2 in charge of a busy emergency department, I need to be able to justify why it is I need 11 nurses or 12 nurses or 13 nurses per shift. And it's extremely difficult for me to make that justification if I'm looking at documentation like this. The problem with this documentation is that when I went to take a look at it, oftentimes there was mere six to eight lines written to reflect the nursing care of somebody who had multiple comorbidities and who had been in the emergency department for maybe 30 or 40 hours. When I looked at the nursing documentation, more often than not, all that was documented was the task-orientated stuff, the recording of the ECG, the insertion of the cannula, the taking of the bloods. Now, I'm not saying that the task-orientated stuff isn't important. Of course, it is in a busy ED. But what I am saying is that we, as emergency nurses, need to be documenting more than the task-orientated stuff. We need to be showing that we are knowledgeable. We need to be showing that we are integrating the best evidence. We need to be showing that we are critical thinkers. But crucially, we need to be showing that the quality of emergency nursing care has a massive um, impact on patient outcomes. Another problem with this documentation is that it wasn't allowing me as a research nurse to capture important information or important data. 
So whilst I had some scant figures about nurse detection of sepsis at the point of triage, I actually couldn't retrieve any meaningful data from this nursing document about what nurses were doing in the fight against sepsis in the post-triage phase. So I developed a nursing pro forma, and I suppose it took me eight to ten months to develop that. And I might ask my friends at the back there just to click on the link for me. Now, I took inspiration from the Emergency Nurses Interest Group in the development of the nursing pro forma. Now, many of you might be aware of the fact that the Emergency Nurses Interest Group is the nursing arm of the National Emergency Medicine Programme that was rolled out in 2012 and has been spearheading services in Irish EDs ever since. Now, the Emergency Nurses Interest Group is currently developing a nursing document for Irish EDs, and so as I say, I've taken some inspiration from them. This is the front page of my nursing pro forma, and you can see that it's entitled the post-triage nursing assessment of the adult patient. Now, research would suggest that in emergency departments, there are high-risk patients who are in a critical part of their journey after being triaged. That is to say, in the post-triage phase, there are some emergency, some emergency department patients who will deteriorate after they've been triaged and while they are waiting to see the emergency doctor mainly because they're not being reassessed and re-evaluated, and oftentimes when their deterioration has been detected, it ends up being a failure to rescue. So you can see I've called the nursing pro forma the post-triage nursing assessment of the adult patient because I want to make frontline staff aware of the fact that this could be a person who is high risk for de deterioration, and so they need re-evaluation and reassessment. Now, the second stipulation of the emergency nurses' interest group is that we raise the prominence of sepsis. So you can see the nursing pro forma incorporates the National Clinical Guideline number six for sepsis. So in the EDUHL now, we have two trigger points for the detection of sepsis. We have a triage trigger point and we also have a trolley trigger point. So our objective in having the trolley trigger point is that we're hoping to capture those people who may slip through the loop at the point of triage so that we can capture those in our comprehensive assessment. You can see the document incorporates all of the key components of the sepsis 6 sepsis management national clinical guideline number six. You can see that the nurse is compelled to work through the guideline. If the nurse who is assessing the patient considers that this person may be high risk for sepsis or indeed have sepsis, the ED nurse is prompted to transfer the patient immediately to resource and to commence the sepsis pathway if appropriate. So you can see the document is very visual. It's got a red hazard sign on the front there. So it's actually uh, you know, indicating to the nurse using the document that actually sepsis screaming is of prime importance. Now, it's a comprehensive assessment, so there are a few more pages in the document. It includes the ISBAR communication tool, falls risk assessment, you know, detection of vulnerability in adult patients arriving in the ED, and the early warning scores. So there's simple pages to it, a number of them. So I suppose the thing to say about the document at this point is that it's been in pilot for the past 10 months. Now, this was a massive transition for us in the ED at UHL, the transition from four staple sheets of paper to a nursing pro forma. So this is a change that needed to be negotiated sensitively. So the pilot was rolled out in November of 2015, and the way it's worked is that I bring out the pilot, I'm dependent on nursing staff from the ED to feed back to me about amendments, I make the necessary amendments, and then I roll out the next edition of the pilot. So that has been the nature of the change in the emergency department. So I'm happy to say that at the end of 10 months, we now have a nursing pro forma that nurses on the front line are happy to use. So the next push for us then is audit of the core components of the document. And in that respect, I asked Yvonne, who is our ADON for sepsis, to conduct a small audit just to try and get a sense of the impact of the nursing pro forma on the detection of sepsis. Um, can you just click on to the next slide for me there? Thanks. So there was 200 patients admitted to the University Hospital Limerick with an infection for the first two weeks of July. And Yvonne chose a small random sample of about 10%, which was 22 patients. So she went through the nursing records of the 22 patients and determined that all 22 were a high risk for sepsis. So I'm delighted to say that we've been able to determine for the first time that of the 22 patients that Yvonne sampled, 17 of those patients had sepsis rapidly identified by nurses in the ED, either at the point of triage or in using the comprehensive assessment. Now that means because ED nurses rapidly identified sepsis, it meant that 
all of these people had their sepsis 6 bundles achieved within the target time. So 17 had fluids, 17 had blood cultures, 17 had a fast FPC and lactate, 16, sorry, had a fast lactate and an FPC done. 15 had antibiotics prescribed and administered as they should have done. So these are small steps, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very small audit, but it is for the first time we're actually capturing some data about the nurse's contribution to sepsis detection beyond the point of triage. So as been said earlier on, we still have much work to do. There was five people who had absolutely no evidence at all that they'd been screened for sepsis. And as a couple of other people have said earlier on, there was low compliance with oxygen administration and low compliance with documentation of the urinary output. But these are small steps and this provides a foundation for future learning. So I suppose in conclusion, I'd just like to say that in the EDUHL, we now have two trigger points for screening for sepsis. We have the triage trigger point, which always existed, but now we've increased this to a trolley trigger point. So remember the post-triage phase. We in the ED at UHL are hoping to capture those people who slip through the loop at the point of triage to prevent those failures to rescue. We now have a comprehensive standardised evidence-based assessment. So because we have that and because it incorporates the ISBAR communication tool, it's promoting seamless care transitions. Crucially, it's become a template for new and inexperienced ED staff. And as many of the ED nationalities have experienced, we've seen a large influx of new and inexperienced staff and an exodus of more seasoned staff. So now we have a comprehensive document that's indicating to new staff in the ED the minimum standard that is required in terms of nursing assessment when somebody presents to the ED. So obviously, as I've said, the next push for us is more robust audit and then perhaps the transition to an electronic record. And some of you may be aware that in nationally there's been huge development in terms of the development of care metrics or quality care metrics. So there are seven strands nationally, including acute services, intellectual disability, older people services, mental health, so on and so forth. So I'm hoping that with the development of my nursing pro forma that at some point it's going to allow us to develop a suite of metrics that are going to reflect you know, performance and quality in emergency nursing. And of course, it will look something like an emergency service and maybe have five or six different metrics running off that. And of course, sepsis will be a key metric, including other metrics like falls risk assessment, for example. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. I'd like to thank you all for listening to me. Thank you very much.